Hello and welcome. My name is Craig D'Souza. I am the CEO of the Creative Industry Association. And today, hot off the press, I bring you uh, a very good friend of mine, Paul Wright, uh, who is the owner and manager director of Hachanda Shopping Channel TV. Um, uh, Paul, welcome and thank you so much for your time as we speak today. I know you're, so it's a very busy day for you, um, but maybe, you, uh, maybe you, you'd like to explain, uh, explain why it's such a busy day, yeah. day for you and who you are. Well, first and foremost, Craig, I, I, really nice to talk to you. It's a real pleasure as ever. As you know, we've been we've been crossing each other's path many times over more recent years. But just a small practical point: I'm not actually managing director of of uh, Hachanda. That isn't my role. I am I am a significant shareholder alongside Val, my business partner, and um, we started Hachanda in 2018 because we saw a bigger opportunity for offering to the British public initially a wider range of crafts than was currently being offered by, for instance, Creating Craft, which is a business which I started back in 2002. Interestingly, prior to that, Shopping TV and specifically Shopping TV devoted to craft did not exist. So for what it's worth, I take some credit for the fact that uh, what you now see is very common it sort of started with myself and i'm basically a passionate crafter um you know i've always been so my mother was incredibly uh, creative she was insane as well um but she had an ability to uh, innovate in every conceivable area she started off as a milliner so she was very practical and i kind of inherited from her not her creative skills, because that, that's not quite what I did, but certainly a passion for crafting. She got me, for instance, at six years old, she started to buy those rubber the rubber moulds that you put plaster of Paris in, you know, Toby jugs, if you uh, maybe it's before your time, but when I was a kid, yeah. they were quite popular. And mum used to get, in the, in the you know, summer holidays, she'd give these moulds to me, and I'd be putting this plaster of Paris in these moulds, turning them out, painting them, appallingly badly and then going around the local houses and flogging them for as it was in those days i think it was about threepence it's a 3d not 3p threepence or <laughs> sixpence so if you like my crafted experience tied with a commercial um, event started way back when and truthfully over the years i've always enjoyed a variety of different crafts for instance my, my passion actually is wood turning taking a piece of wood that you don't know what's what it's going to be like coming up with put it on a lathe and seeing that grain come out and then polishing it and I've got more biscuit bowls than just about anybody in the world because I just like making them I've got no outlet for them I don't sell them but there you go but uh, again just going back to my childhood interestingly I started marquetry which again is a a wood-based craft and again not many people are aware of it and come back to my, my more recent passion to try to bring a wider number of crafts to the British public. And it's basically taking veneer and creating pictures. And again, when I was about 13, I produced a fire screen for my mum, which was this, this uh, it was, I think it was a Swiss, a Swiss um, Alpine scene. And I gave it to my mum. And again, was it the best? Was it that professional? No, but it didn't matter. I'd made it and my mum loved it. She treasured it for her, in her entire life. It was always in her living room, you know, when the fire wasn't lit. And in fact, as I say, of all the things that you can do if you're a crafter is to produce something which exclusively has taken you, your time, and perhaps a little bit of your own magical inner creativity. And um, if you then give that, sell it, whatever, it doesn't really matter. You've had the pleasure of the, of the creativity process, but actually the person to whom you give it often appreciates the, the value in that. It's not like you go into a shop and buy something. Somebody took their time to make this. And I'll just give you the example of my mum. There's something that wasn't great, but she loved it and she revered it. And for me, going back to 2002 when I started creating craft as an example at that time I had this vision I was already uh, my partner and I had started Ideal World we were the second TV shopping channel in the UK following QVC way back then and I had a vision for TV being a wonderful mechanism for 
bringing products and ideas to life, you know, with physical demonstrations. And, and so the full benefits could be shared and explained to the to viewing public. But again, I hark back to my childhood and anybody who's watching this who's my age, which is, by the way, pretty old now. Um, maybe I'm just too old for this game now. I don't know. <laughs> but um, in my youth, we used to watch a pro program called Blue Peter. I believe yep. it's still going today. Yep. And one of the features in Blue Peter was always a craft project. Specifically, and why it stuck in my mind, I don't know, but it did. You used to have collect toilet rolls and sticky back plastic and, and paper and glitter and glue and a pair of scissors. And I always remember, you know, crafting along with Blue Peter to make a thing. To, in those days, it was a it was an animated series called uh, Tracy Island. It was yeah. this. It was like <laughs> Thunderbirds the Go. It was this kind of island thing. Well, again, it may have been awful, but we made these things, you know, along with the TV. So back in 2000, when I'd started Ideal World, it was being successful. I had this dream and this vision that if only we could create Blue Peter for adults, because there are all these people, you know, hereditary, you know, and handing down traditional skills, whether that be willow weaving or marquetry or uh, art, doesn't matter what it is. With culture as it's evolved over my lifetime, fewer and fewer of those skills are being handed down. You know, kids have got so many other things to think about. Parents are very busy, you know, in my day, my mum would sit down with me and show me how to make these plaster moulds, you know, would, would encourage yeah. me to do my marquetry and all that sort of thing. So for me, again, television is the perfect mechanism to put in front of people a craft or a hobby, you know, and, you know, I guess you could call cooking and, and is, is a hobby for definitely, for certainly for my wife. I mean, she's always experimenting with something new and gets a lot of satisfaction from it. So I felt that if I could only start a craft channel where we could showcase um, products and show them, yes, it might be a bit of paper, glitter, glue, whatever. It's not what it is. It's what you can do with it. And the very process of doing something with these, these rather boring and not very inspiring materials, you can then inject some of your personality, some of your creativity, and while you're doing that, you're completely transfixed. You're involved in the project, which in today's world means, you know, actually this could be a huge stress relief. I mean, we're all under pressure. We've had this pandemic. Mm. We're confined to homes. We're fed up. We're miserable. You know, we don't feel incentivized to go and do a great deal. So if you can get crafting, and although I'm going back to 2000 when I started, it's, we didn't have quite the same drive in terms of mindfulness and mental welfare at that time but certainly the principles of getting involved and expressing that inner creative view was really important to me and it it certainly resonated with the public very quickly creating craft became established as a significant you know a significant place for tv viewers to go to get inspiration education entertainment because what we produce here anyway now uh, uh, her and now the craft ought to be is we hope for first and foremost entertainment which is engaging we want to inspire we want to educate but actually we want to get people motivated to to get a craft it doesn't have to be making cards which has been really the the mainstay of my original business creating craft there's a myriad of other things that are uh, crafts out there that people could get involved with if they only knew about them. And for me, TV, as well as this, this, this education side, is a great way for people and a resource for people to come and watch and hopefully get inspired. Good for them. And they need the materials to do that. And that's the commercial dimension that finances that, that vision of, of bringing craft to a wider audience. So that's kind of how it got started back in 2000. It grew very rapidly. Um, we had our challenges like all businesses do, but you know it was very successful and it remains very successful to this day. And it's something which I'm particularly proud of as a matter of fact, but I did get tired we had uh, we had a major fire back in 2000 and yeah we had to recover from that so yeah we came to a point where we decided to sell that business which i did uh, it was a public mm -hmm. company um which was fine but it means that you're often 
beholden to shareholders whose expectation is not necessarily aligned to um, to, to coming up with different and creative ideas. Uh, they want money, they want profit, and you know that's that's what shareholders look for in a business. So we sold the business back in I think 2013. I retired. Brilliant. Went and played golf badly. Didn't improve. But I was, when I left Creating Craft, we sold it. It always felt to me like unfinished business. I still had that, that, that passion for craft, doing it, but not only doing it, feeling that we never really did deliver the wider, the, the wider information, the wider knowledge of different crafts for people to perhaps consider getting involved with it. And hence, I came up with Hachanda. I saw the future as absolutely at that time, no longer dependent on traditional broadcast TV as we knew it then, you know, which is your BBC and ITVs and, and yeah. uh, latterly channels. I saw the future as being not only wider in terms of product that could be offered, but actually craft is universal. Every country, every person in the world, believe it or not, gets involved and is aware of craft. They may vary in, from territory to territory. In America, for instance, 10, 20 years ago, it was, it was um, scrapbooking. Now that's kind of evolved into card making. But, you know, if you go onto YouTube, there's a myriad of crafts there as well. So I wanted to get back into business. I was bored. Um, I came up with the name Hachanda because what I wanted to do was to have this broader range of crafts, not just paper crafts. And so the name I came up with, which, by the way, was severely opposed by everybody that was around me at the time, was Home of Craft. Yeah, that's broad. Craft Hobbies, broad. And Art, broad. Because I thought that would, if you like, be the maximum. The only trouble was from an internet perspective, if I was thinking ahead as the future would be very much dominated by the internet, as it has come to be, slightly quicker than I thought admittedly but that was how I saw it that's a hell of a big name to try I uh, expect anybody to a remember and b enter into a, a, as a, a into a website to try to get to you in the first place so we shortened it to as to become an acronym hence home h of o yeah 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 hochanda fantastic and, yeah, I was adamant and I thought, well, Amazon didn't really mean very much when it was created and it was sure that had that benefit. And yes, if you knew what it was, you kind of got explained. But the truth of the matter is I got it wrong, I think. It is distinctive. Those people who know and love us and over the last five years, mm -hmm. it's been great. But even today, as we've just had it, we just decided today that we would change the name and change the brand to something which was simpler and would lend itself more easily for people to find us on the internet specifically, whether it would be here or anywhere else in the world for that matter. Um, people thought that Hachanda was either a Mexican dish, a Spanish dance. It didn't quite relate to craft. We had to work quite hard to create that. And for those customers right. and viewers that we have, they, they get it, they understand it. But there's an enormous pool of people out there, especially in these challenging times, who I think could benefit from craft and crafting in, in its various forms. And I'd like to make it as easy as possible for them to get to us. So today, our big announcement was it's still Hachanda. The business has not changed its name or its function or how it operates. We just have changed the name. We're coming up with a different branding and it's called the Craft Store. It's simple. It's got craft in the, in, the, in the title. It's a store where if you are going into a craft store, you'd expect to be offered or see a wide variety of different crafts. So we think that is basically simplified it. Is it the most exciting name in the world? Probably not. We'd like to believe it does exactly what it says on the tin. So that's kind of a, a little bit of background. And alongside that, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I innovate. I've got a number of fresh ideas to uh, hopefully engage and provide more engaging entertainment for our, our viewers as we go down the track. Well, I know how entrepreneurial you are over the number of years and conversations that we continually have. 
So I think a, a few burning questions that I have that I, that I think sure. most of the, uh, a few people might be uh, might be wanting to just to clear up and, 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 and get squared away is that Pachanda hasn't been sold out. It's still the same team, still still a very much a family team um, that run it, uh, uh, essentially. Well, let's answer changed. that one first. Yeah, well, let's keep that. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, there's no question. These have been challenging times. Um, I started Hachanda, um, basically it was a, a demand from existing suppliers who were, at that time when we started it, disgruntled with their relationships elsewhere. Um, it suited me, it was something I wanted to do, so I didn't take a lot of persuading. And we do run the business very much with both our viewer and our suppliers at the heart of everything we do. We go out of our way to welcome our suppliers. With them, without them, we've got nothing. Um, we put them at front of the programming so that their passion, their, their expertise can be uh, you know, put before the pub, viewing public who either love it or don't. Our team is absolute, tends to be younger. It's a young business. I'm the old codger, I'm afraid. I'm a little bit old school. But, um, yeah, we're blessed with incredibly motivated and dedicated team of uh, internal to provide that service to the viewer, but also that respect and, and welcoming feeling to our suppliers. And it is, it is a family business. Val and I own the majority of the shares. We have no intention of selling out anytime soon. That said, like any growing business, as we're rebranding, um, I'd like to think that we've got a lot of really exciting ideas and opportunities. And whilst we're not interested in selling the business right now, we've done that once, it will be sold because I'm too old to keep going forever. You know, I'm over 70 now. So, you know, uh, even, I can't keep it going forever. But um, at the moment, if, if we, we, as we have done before, we are considering perhaps raising some more money to invest in marketing to basically take our message to a wider audience. And that goes back to the rebranding to keep it simple, to keep our message universal and would go across national boundaries without having to explain Hachanda is an acronym, whatever that acronym right. is. So no, yeah. it just knocks that one on the head. So yes, yes, it would be nice. And hopefully, as, um, if we do decide to go down that road, we'll offer all our existing viewers and our existing shareholders, many of whom are already viewers, we have the opportunity to increase their investment if they should so wish. Because the reality is those who did invest with us alongside when we started, they have become, they are an incredible group. They are the best people in the world. Not only are they shareholders, but they're brilliant ambassadors for the, for the business. So, you know, we feel, again, at the time, it was something innovative and it's paid off. Fantastic. So now with this that's, new... That's the money issue. Done. That's, that's the money issue. Done. Straight away. It's not being yeah. sold, although uh, for the foreseeable future, obviously, we know you can't carry on forever. So that's fantastic. The, the, the main people that are running the channel are still in place. They're still going to run now what is the, a new dawn, a new era, the craft, the craft store. Um, and that's uh, effective as of the 1st of... April. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we made our announcement this morning just to let people know that this is coming. We all, all our livery and all our branding will actually be implemented from the 1st of April. So I think that's next Thursday. So we're very excited by that. Our, our suppliers have, have welcomed this, this change. I think they've understood the challenges, our historic name. And, uh, you yeah, know, I'll, I'll be honest and say retrospectively i probably made a mistake but then we all make mistakes i make more mistakes than anybody i think you know running the association i always say to people what you do is you you you, you tend to fail forward and what i mean by that is you, you you make mistakes but you fall forward you learn from it you get up you move move on you move, you carry on forward you're always pushing forward it doesn't matter if you make mistakes um i don't know if a chatter was a mistake or not I totally understand why the, why the rebrand and craft store does for those visitors and those suppliers. It does open up uh, a larger avenue for a wider audience uh, across the, the planet to, to come along and view in, as well as also suppliers to get involved in a in a in a bigger channel. Um, so, so I yeah, totally, I mean, totally, totally understand that. Well, it's interesting because one of the things we, we, we pride ourselves on 
is, I mean, it's very easy to, to get locked into the big suppliers. And we do need, you know, the key suppliers who can provide volume. But we also are very keen to in, in, encourage new entrepreneurs, people that we might even have incentivized to get crafting from, from, you know, viewing us. They then become independently creative and they become uh, have the ability to create their own unique businesses. And our doors are always open for them to come and showcase what they've got that is different and unique because it's their inspiration, it's their creativity, and put it before the public. And sometimes the wider craft public love it, and sometimes they don't. We are not judgmental. What we will do is always welcome anybody and everybody has got something that is you know, a little bit different. We try to keep the variety there because variety in and of itself, whilst it may not always sell the product, what it does do is provides continuous entertainment and interest. And, you know, what we want is viewers to, to love us and visit us on a regular basis because sooner or later we will inspire them to get involved. And if that, for me, is the biggest, the biggest uh, challenge and the biggest objective. So, fantastic. So, so, again, making sure that um, I think you answered a couple, a couple of my questions there. So, for anybody that wants to get involved with uh, the craft store, your door is always open. Um, all your oh. uh, contact details will be at the bottom of the, in the comments section and uh, at the end of this video. So, it's just a case of kind of reaching out to you and, and, and then having a discussion with you and seeing what happens. Uh, and that's, that's for, is that for suppliers, for presenters, for anybody that might have an idea or concept? Is that for everything, do you think? Um, I think it is. I mean, our door, again, our door is always open. One of the things that ever since we opened the doors here, one of the criticisms that is so easy to, to, to uh, get from supply base is I try to approach you. You didn't, uh, you didn't respond. You didn't answer my, I've tried to get in. Uh, what I've tried to instill here through the team, and they are, fantastic the team here I have no i mean forget me i might have the might have provided some finance and a few ideas but these are the guys who day-to-day -day commitment passion and delivery of, of everything that i've outlined to you I, I made it clear that any every all suppliers must be responded to even if it's something for whatever reason we don't think is going to work for us you don't ignore people. You go back and say, look, this is a really great idea and, and thank you for approaches. It's just not right for us or we, it, we don't think it'll work. What we won't do and what I hope we don't do is just ignore them. And that can be so debilitating. If you're a supplier, you know, these are many of our suppliers, especially in the craft industry, are owner, owner run businesses. And they're not all big corporates with, with you know, vast groups of you know employees some are I mean, there, there aren't that many significant large craft dedicated craft supplies in the uk worldwide yeah there's more and uh, you know interestingly for us that's the big opportunity um the one thing this pandemic has done and uh, has shown us that we had to be adaptable flexible and start to be again entrepreneurial as because you know if we're if i'm as I'm telling you, we're reliant on our guests coming to our studios to share their passion via our, our you know, live broadcast. That's fine, so long as they can travel to our studio to do that. And of course, over the pandemic, that's not been possible. So initially, we kind of, this happened on a day. We were out of business, potentially, you know, you, you know guests, and if you're dependent on them, what are you going to do? So we started off with encouraging our guests to take little videos of themselves on their mobile phones it kind of plugged a gap it wasn't yeah. brilliant we didn't get that that interactive spontaneity that we so love and crave and then it's kind of evolved with well like processes like i'm speaking to you now craig i mean this yeah. is a yeah. team, team but you know facebook live and we've managed to integrate now live interactive action with our studio so you as you are now talking to me, we can now pipe you straight through to our, our broadcast platform and we can interact as we are now. But you're at home. I'm here in Peterborough. And yet yeah. we are still interacting together in real time. And that gives that spontaneity and that allows 
all the things that can happen with a unscripted live <laughs> conversation. Then we make lots of mistakes, things go wrong, not everything works, but that's what would happen in the real world. And I think, I think our viewers understand that. But the point of the story is that very ability to now bring guests in. Well, if they might not be able to come down from Doncaster, but they could now come into us from Timbuktu, India, doesn't yeah. matter. You know, Hong Kong, Taiwan, it doesn't matter. We can, you know, providing the people are up and, you know, time zones are okay. Yeah. We can now present them and their product where they don't physically have to get on a plane and come 6,000 miles to visit us. And that for us is exciting opportunity to bring a wider variety of new crafts, new ideas, but also um, bring these external suppliers to the UK. And, and, you know, show, show the British public in particular, as well as the international public, great new ideas that they never even knew existed. That's fantastic. I mean, that's fantastic, isn't it? I mean, I, I think, I think um, the world got very, the world got smaller in such a quicker time with, with modern technology like this. And it seems like you're, you, you seem to be plugging it, a gap to a certain degree um, to get yeah, people and the crafting. market. The market for us has just exploded. I mean, the reality is, you know, our, our potential audience isn't any longer constrained to the UK. Um, who, those people who could see us that wanted to and knew we existed on either Sky or, or Freeview or whatever. Um, with IPTV, and you'll have seen this incredible growth in streaming services. I mean, as an example, I mean, across the world, but take America, a good, good big market. We like America. Um, you know, traditionally, TV was always delivered there via cable. Well, mm. then you've got the Netflixes and the Amazon Primes and the Disney Pluses and all these other, you know, Roku and all this other lot offering streaming services. Some, some consolidators, just all the channels from around the world, some, you know, premium, in other words, their subscription services. They're now being delivered to your television, not to, the, to your computer. They are, of course, you can access them by your tablet, yeah. your mobile phone, but you can now access this content by your TV. So suddenly you have now saying, well, I don't have to be on Sky or whatever. I forget what it is in America. I don't have to be on a cable station in America to get to American audience. They can now access me through one of those subscription type services or a, or a consolidator or guess what dot com yeah. you know and yeah. they can bring that straight to their tv and most it's quite interesting i'm excited by all this i don't understand it by the way i've got good people <laughs> in. you know if you've got a smart tv these days most of them are preloaded with amazon prime in the uk of course it's got um, bbc catch up but it's also got youtube well you know, if there was ever an opportunity, YouTube's pretty well universal. We have a we have our own YouTube channel, which also you know takes our live feed. So anyone anywhere in the world can watch us on their TV via YouTube. And the challenge then is the back end of that, which we work very hard on, is can we offer the same price to everybody wherever they are? Answer: mm. Yes, it has implications. Can you deliver? within a sensible period of time to a customer who is not based around the corner in Doncaster, but is actually somewhere in Timbuktu and get it to them within a reasonable period of time? Yes. Why? Because the world has changed and, you know, it's now global trading. And dare I tell you, which sounds really awful, most people either speak and certainly understand wherever they happen to be English. Yes, so you can yeah. take basic same physical content. Okay, it's British and it's got its kind of Britishness about it, slightly quirky. Some of our guests are slightly eccentric, and we love them for that. That's why we. <laughs> that's why we love them. Um, British British eccentricity. It was the cornerstone of Ideal World when I started that back in two thousand. Trust me on that one. But um, you know, we are what we are, and lots of people outside the UK just love that British style eccentricity humor but also what shines through which is what i've said all the way through is is inventiveness and passion if you've got that then you've got everything you're, you're won. fantastic so then so then lastly lastly um paul um i think especially from me and everybody watching we, we congratulate you which you 
all the success with, with um, the crafts on it, and I'm sure it will be. Um, for, for those watching, those businesses watching, those creative people watching, uh, you've been in this industry for a long, long period of time. What are your top tips for anyone that wants to start a business or get involved in this industry? Well, what, what do you think? Is it keep having that passion, having that drive? What are your top tips for people that are... are in the... um, well, interesting, you don't have to be unique. I suppose that's the first thing. I mean, for that, for this, there's different, different areas here. If we're talking about consumers, well, I guess, you know, you just got to get yourself in front of them and working with someone like ourselves is a, is a, is a nice, easy way. We're very easy to work with. That's one thing, but you can do that completely for all the reasons I've just given you. You can do that independently. There are avenues out there that you can create awareness for whatever it is you've got. But the real trick from a, from a, from an innovative perspective is believe in yourself. You know, the fact is the world is open to you. The world, there's enough space for us all. You can carve your own individual niche, but you just got to have the confidence to do it. And the good news is the mechanism for reaching out, or mechanisms, I should say, for reaching out are there. They're not difficult. There are very few barriers to entry, you know, to getting started. So for goodness sake, just let it go. And you may not be successful on the first attempt. You will make mistakes because we all do. And what I say, my mantra is if, if you're not making mistakes, you're just not working hard enough because the key is make mistakes, put your arms around them, acknowledge you made a mistake and, and then learn from it and move on. And you will have lots of challenges. But you know what? We're human beings. The one thing about challenge is that if you're dedicated enough and you talk to most successful entrepreneurs, even the big ones, They'll all will tell you along the journey, they've had disappointments, they've had knockbacks, but they just, they just have that self-belief. So if there was one message, whether it's whoever it happens to be, self-belief is the crucial thing. And you will succeed because you can. Fantastic. Paul, like I said, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I know it's been a busy, busy day for you. Um, with the rebrand, we wish you all the best of uh, luck in the world. For those watching, please follow Hachanda, and then on the 1st of April, it will be the craft store. All the contact details will be down at, at the bottom. Yeah. Um, and in the slide. But for now, Paul, I say thank you so, so much for your time, and I wish you best of luck. You're more than welcome, Craig. Look after yourself and the family. Stay safe. Stay safe.